Now in the previous video, I only showed the candle being lit and extinguished. I didn't show anything about how it works. So this video is the how it works video. It's not a how-to video. I'll have an instructable for that. I'll put a link in the description. Nor is this a technical deep dive. I'll put that on my website. There are lots of things I want to tell you about, show you, but it's outside the scope of this video. I'll show you this candle working up close and I'll tell you about some of the different concepts at play here and things that went into making this thing. Now, if somebody was to look at this and wonder if it's a candle or not, they'd probably pull out their pocket handbook of miscellaneous objects around the house and find that there are six questions to understand if something is or is not a candle. The questions would probably be something like this. Does it look like a candle? Does it light like a candle? Does it flicker like a candle? When you blow on it, does it extinguish like a candle? Is there a wisp of smoke once it goes out? And does it smell like a candle? And if the answer is yes to all of those, then there's a pretty good chance it's a candle. So I'm gonna use these questions as sort of the framework for this video. And we'll start with the demo and step through that. Oh, let's stop right there. Does it look like a candle? The jar is a candle jar and the diffusing material is actual candle wax melted around the inside of the candle. I'll go into this stuff more in detail later, but I think we're good on this one here. Now the reason I'm hovering over the candle with a match several times here is to just sort of set this apart from other LED candles you light with a match that I've seen online. See, by this point, those candles will already be lit, but candle lighting doesn't work that way. You actually have to get the flame down inside the candle, and there's a race. You're trying to get the wick to light faster than the flame is traveling up the match. And this provides us with the same predicament we would have with a real candle. You gotta decide on the spot. Do I go get another match and try to light it again? Or do I endure the pain on the top of my thumb in order to make sure this candle lights with this match. Now once the wick does light, it doesn't go from off to on right away. On a real candle, it's kind of random. Sometimes it lights slow, sometimes it lights as a pulse at first and maybe bounces around a little bit. And so that's the case here, a little subtle detail. And you can see it in the demo as, as it has sort of a pulse. And it doesn't always do that, uh, as a real candle doesn't always light the same way. And then it sort of increases in brightness as it fully lights. Several prototypes into this, I realized that I could not nail the flickering. I just couldn't seem to figure out what it was about the digital candle that was different than the real candle. Uh, the flickering just seemed so fake. Even if I had these sort of gradient increases or decreases in brightness. It just was so fake looking. So as I watched a candle flame sort of bounce around, I realized it is so random and so non-linear that I really needed to incorporate some of that into the LEDs in this candle. Now I'll show you what I mean here in a few minutes once we get to the inner workings of this candle. And it'll be quite a bit easier to explain when we're actually seeing it up close. So now it's time to blow out the candle, which just happens like that. And the candle does turn off pretty much right away. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny delay as the LEDs sort of sequentially turn off, but it's really quick as a candle being blown out is quick. So nothing really fancy there uh, until we see the smoke. I had no idea up until a month ago that putting smoke in this project would even be an option. This project's been going on for three years. It's mainly been on the back burner, but every once in a while I'll pull it out and move it forward a little bit. I couldn't have ever guessed that I'd be using smoke on this thing. So here's the point when we realized this might work. Oh, it just smoked. That was right. To make a really long story shortish, uh, I'm gonna push a lot of the details back to later on in this video. But essentially I was doing some testing for my dust collection system using graphite from a pencil, some glycerin, and some low voltage electricity. 
and found that I could generate smoke, but it was too brittle for any uses I could think of. But it stuck on the back of my mind, you know, there's some sort of possibility out there of generating smoke. Then about a month ago, I realized I have a friend who's into pyrotechnics, and he mentioned vaping parts. So essentially what I did was I took the concepts used for vaping parts and combined those with my wine bottle filled with IKEA parts and jet fuel tiki torch to create the mechanism that's inside this candle that's responsible for the smoke. <laughs> the scented candle part of this, you can just add a couple drops of a scented oil. We use thief oil uh, in our house for scented stuff anyway. Put a couple drops in here and it becomes a scented candle. You may notice that it won't be scented until you blow it out. Well, since we have control over the code, we can say every five minutes, turn on the wire for just a short period of time, enough to generate some smell and not the cloud of smoke. So now we can ask, is it a candle? Nope. Let's start with the container for the candle. This is one of the things that took the longest amount of time, even though it's the simplest solution. I just couldn't seem to figure out what to put the candle in. 3D printing a textured sort of vase would be appropriate for a good diffuser, and it was a good diffuser, but 3D printer filament is a thermoplastic, and thermoplastic is not a match for a lit match. It'll melt. Fortunately, recently, a friend gave us some of these vases. Some had candles in them, some uh, did not, but I needed the wax a little bit up higher in order to hide the electronics inside. So my first thought was to melt the wax by lighting the candle inside, twist it around so that the melted wax would coat the inside walls, uh, but that just turned the wax grayish, blackish, which it was really cool, but not what I was going for. So then I took one of the empty jars, took a brand new candlestick, chopped it up, pulled the wick out, just put the wax in there and put that on my lathe iron, heated it up nice and melty, clear, and then spun it in my welding gloves. So the wax coated those walls in a way that doesn't take up much space and looks really good. It looks you know, like a wax diffused sort of effect like in a real candle. Then I drilled a hole for the power cord using a diamond drill bit on the drill press using light pressure. And that's it for the vase. So now that the vase was done, I had dimensions and I just went to town. It was somehow freeing having that boundary of knowing what my limits were. So you see here in the middle is the Arduino Pro Mini, or the brain behind this thing. It's connected to an infrared sensor, which detects the flame, as well as a microphone, which detects when we blow on it. And then here's the MOSFET power transistor that handles the switching of the wire that gets hot to make the smoke. So here's the fuse for that wire just to make sure nothing bad happens if something strange happens. And then on top, the NeoPixels, they're the four color model, the red, green, blue, and white. And that allows me to boost the white and the red to make that nice warm candly candle color. And I have these things running in a pseudo asynchronous sort of way and two strips sort of parallel to each other. And that way one LED can be rising while one's falling and we don't have to wait for one to finish before the other one starts. And there's a lot of randomization going on here. The time between flickers varies. The pixel that animates varies. The brightness that the pixel goes up to or down to varies. And the duration of that time that it takes to reach that target brightness and or return back to the normal brightness varies. So if you add all these up together, you end up with this imitation of a flame that looks pretty convincing. And then on top of that, the two strips are set up independently and operating pseudo asynchronously. So you don't have one waiting for the other at any point here. Both are sort of going at the same time and that compounds the effect. All right, for the smoking part, inside the jar is a combination of vegetable glycerin and a couple drops of smell good oil. 
Now that is a really thick solution, so I'd recommend taking a syringe to inject that into the top of the middle of the wick just to help get the wicking started. I found that it still will wick the solution, the thick solution, it just is slow doing so. So I haven't had to redo that to the top, but I would recommend going and doing that so you don't have to wait for it to reach the top from the bottom before you start playing with this thing. All right, now about that wick. Initially I was using cotton based on my research of vaping parts, but I kept burning the cotton, I think because of the amount of power I was applying so quick to it, because I really needed just a short burst of power right off the bat in order to get smoke really quick in a way that was natural. Then I remembered the tiki torch. I'm always amazed that a tiki torch can be burning for so long and the wick lasts so long, because that's a hot burn, burning kerosene or jet fuel. So I went out and got a wick, pulled off the webbing, and then just wrapped the fiberglass fibers in the wire that I was using to heat up. And that worked really well. So I've used this thing now a hundred times at least, as well as a few torture sort of tests trying to get this thing to burn. Now, I didn't really want to mess it up, so I didn't try really hard, but I left it on for several seconds at once, when this thing only needs 1.2 seconds. I used higher voltages to test that, and this thing is a tank. It just keeps working, and the solution keeps lasting. I have not had to refill the solution yet. The wire that's wrapped around the fiberglass is 28-gauge canthal wire, and those leads are clamped at positions that measure 4 ohms of resistance so that when we apply 12 volts, we know that only 3 amps of current are going to be going through this circuit. Now that leads us to the power source. I ended up going with a plug-in AC-DC adapter, 12 volts with a 5 amp capacity. I did a lot of testing with batteries, and I found some things that would work. The ones that would work well were too big. They are power tool batteries. The ones that would work so-so were small enough usually, but they didn't provide enough current right off the bat to give that quick wisp of smoke. Then to wrap things up, I 3D printed a tray to hold all the parts. Now I printed this in PETG to hopefully resist any sort of heat issues, but I think it's low enough that it's not going to be a problem. All right, well there it is. If you'd like to see more things like this, subscribe, but also check out the Instructable link below where I go into more step-by-step -step sort of details about how to do this. I have some diagrams, some code on GitHub, check out my website, keithstestgarage.com. Thanks for watching.